Hi, Steve Ellingson here with a video on spectrum of periodic waveforms. First, recall that any periodic waveform can be represented using a Fourier series. And a Fourier series is simply an infinite sum of sines and cosines. So if it's periodic, we can represent it if we add up enough sines and cosines. Here's the relevant expression, the one which is commonly used. Here t is the period, and note the period is simply 2 pi divided by the angular frequency omega naught. And the coefficients a sub n and b sub n are obtained by integrating over one period of the waveform after multiplying by cosine or sine respectively. So, for example, the very simple waveform c times cosine omega naught t, what we end up with is a naught being zero, which simply means there's no dc component. A1 is equal to C, which is saying simply that the component at the frequency omega naught is magnitude C. And all values of A sub n for n greater than 2 are 0, because there's nothing else required to make that waveform. In this formulation, there is no B naught, so that's irrelevant. B sub 1 is 0, and furthermore, all other values of B sub n are 0. So if we look at the spectrum of that waveform, what we see is simply one component, and it's at a frequency of omega naught, as expected. Now, for our purposes, there is an alternative form known as the magnitude phase form. And in that form, it's still an infinite sum of sinusoids, but in this case, it's a little bit simpler. It's the sum of cosines with phase shifts, psi sub n. So we get dc plus an infinite sum of these cosine terms. So no more a sub n and b sub n, we have simply big A sub n. In this formulation, if you care to calculate it, the big A sub n's are given by the square root of a n squared plus b n squared, and the phase for each one of these terms is given by the four quadrant arctangent of b sub n with respect to a sub n. So in our previous example, where we just had cosine of omega t, Big A naught is 0, big A1 is C, and big AN is 0 for all n greater than or equal to 2. As far as the phase terms, there is no psi sub naught. It doesn't appear in the formulation. Psi sub 1 is 0, which is simply saying that that first term is cosine, not sine, or something in between. And all phases for terms greater than or equal to 2 are 0. Now, using this magnitude phase formulation, each term in the sum can be interpreted as either a fundamental term or a harmonic term. What do I mean by that? Well, if I expand out that infinite sum, I get the original DC term. I get a term which represents a tone or a sinusoid at a frequency of omega naught, and we call that the fundamental. The second term n equals 2 is a tone, or sinusoid, at twice omega naught, or 2 omega naught. And we refer to that as the second harmonic. The third term in the infinite series is a tone at a frequency 3 times omega naught. So we refer to that as the third harmonic. Next, I want to use this magnitude phase formulation to examine some important waveforms, at least to us in RF and microwave engineering. These waveforms include half-wave rectified sinusoids, full-wave rectified sinusoids, and pulse trains. And a special case of pulse train, which I will point out, will be the square wave. That's a pulse train which has 50% duty cycle. Okay, first, the half-wave rectified sinusoid. In this case, the original sinusoid is in green here, and the half-wave rectified sinusoid includes only the positive parts of the waveform, just as I've shown here. The spectrum of a half-wave rectified sinusoid is as shown here. What we see is harmonics at omega naught, at twice omega naught, and four times omega naught. In other words, we see the fundamental, we see the second harmonic, and we see the fourth harmonic. Note that the odd harmonics, 3 times omega naught, 5 times omega naught, and so on, are all zero. 
Also, for this waveform, the harmonic magnitude goes as, or is proportional to, 1 over n squared minus 1. So they fall off pretty quickly. That's simply reflecting the fact that a half-wave rectified sinusoid still looks a lot like a sinusoid, and the content that needs to be added to make it appear to be half-wave rectified is of relatively small magnitude. A full-wave rectified sinusoid is different only in that the negative going parts of the waveform appear as positive going parts. So instead of simply throwing away the parts of the waveform that go negative, they now appear as positive parts of the waveform. One thing you note right away about a full-wave rectified sinusoid is that you do not expect to see any content at the original frequency. This thing is now periodic at twice the original frequency. So based just on that observation, we would expect that the spectrum has no content at the fundamental, but lots of content at twice the fundamental frequency. And that's in fact what we see. We see DC, we see twice the fundamental, that's the second harmonic, and we see the fourth harmonic. The fundamental is completely suppressed. Furthermore, the odd order harmonics are completely suppressed. So we find that odd harmonics, 3, 5, 7, and so on, are all zero. Harmonic magnitude, as before, is proportional to 1 over n squared minus 1, so they roll off pretty quickly with increasing harmonic index. So we'll note the following differences from half-wave rectification. No fundamental, and the harmonic magnitude is actually twice the harmonic magnitude for half-wave rectified sinusoids. And that's simply because we have twice the energy. We uh, have these uh, zero periods in the half-wave rectified sinusoid filled with more waveform. So harmonic magnitude goes up by a factor of two. The next waveform I'd like to consider is the pulse train. And a pulse train looks like this. It is either some non-zero value or at a zero value. And the fraction of time that it's at the non-zero value is quantified by W. So the duty cycle is W over T. W over T is the duty cycle. For such a waveform, we get all the harmonics, including the fundamental and DC. So we get DC, we get the fundamental, we get the second harmonic, third harmonic, fourth harmonic, fifth harmonic. But two things to note here. Harmonic magnitude rolls off relatively slowly, but it depends on the duty cycle. So we see that the harmonic magnitude falls off as 1 over n, whereas it was falling off as 1 over n squared for the rectified sinusoids. But we also see it depends on the duty cycle. So the harmonic magnitude rolls off faster or slower depending on what the duty cycle is. So as I've noted here, the magnitudes of these harmonics depend on the duty cycle. If I set the duty cycle equal to 50%, that means WT equals 1 half, then I get an ideal square wave, or at least what most people would consider to be the ideal square wave. In that case, the spectrum now looks like this, where I've accounted for this sine factor in the harmonic magnitude. What we find is that we get DC, we get the fundamental, the second harmonic is missing, third harmonic is there, fourth harmonic is missing, fifth harmonic is there, and the magnitude rolls off as 1 over n, because that sine factor has magnitude 1. So we see that for a square wave, the magnitude of the harmonics rolls off relatively slowly with increasing harmonic index. And just to underscore here, even harmonics, 2, 4, 6, and so on, are all zero, as long as that duty cycle is 50%. Odd harmonics are strong relative to those of a rectified sinusoid. So you know if you're interested in higher order harmonics, and uh, specifically the odd higher order harmonics, the square wave is what produces those. If you are interested in even harmonics, 2, 4, 6, and so on, rectified sinusoids is probably of more interest. That concludes this lecture on the spectrum of periodic signals.